Oh, hi guys. I've been thinking quite a lot about general intelligence today. So I've been thinking that perhaps there are two different kinds of intelligence. One of them is hardwired. So for example, in our own minds, an example of a hardwired facial recognition system would be our ability to recognize faces. Now there's a huge amount of flexibility in this. So we might see a cartoon and we can recognize that as a face. We might see an animal, we can recognize their face. This is basically a system and it's very, very complex. But what it does, it has an input and an output, okay? And the input will be visual information, for example, in the case of a visual face. And the output will be what the face means, okay? So the kind of emotion um, that the face has, this will be coming out of it. Now the actual code or in our case, neurons inside our brain, which actually enables this. It doesn't really matter how it works. I mean, what matters is that it does work, okay? And that it feeds the information into our general intelligence so that we can kind of assess situations. So for example, if there's a really aggressive guy and he's walking towards me, I'll be able to recognize his face as being really aggressive and I'll be able to act appropriately to maybe protect myself so again, this is an example of a sort of hardwired system in the brain. It, to a certain extent, it's learned, you know? And like I say, I can look at SpongeBob SquarePants and I can kind of see his face and understand his expressions. And I didn't have to learn this in school. This is just something that kind of occurred naturally. Obviously, it needed some information to work. And then we also have softwired areas of brain. These don't have a sort of input output function in the same way rather they kind of do loads of comparisons okay and they kind of come up with hypotheses and they do things which aren't linear so it isn't input output it's a bit more complex and i think a lot of this um these areas are obviously they're kind of created when we're born but they kind of are created through use so i'll give you an example well we've got the ability to understand language from a very early age and a lot of this is sort of hardwired in the brain but the actual language itself i guess is more softwired i mean that might be a bad example but i guess our general intelligence um would be a better example of um softwired anyway how do humans learn so i've kind of been thinking today that perhaps our brains are really relationship managers so we see things and we ascribe other information to them. So for example, if I, um, like I say, I see someone's face, um, I understand the relationship between um, their face and, you know, I can kind of predict what they're going to do in the future. And this is, well, I kind of associate an angry face with perhaps aggression, okay? Um, so I'm, I'm understanding the relationship between things. I also think there's simple rewards and complex rewards a simple reward might be, for example, if you've got a, a young baby, okay, and the baby gets hungry, baby might actually just get really upset. It might kind of yell and scream, and then someone will feed it, okay, hopefully. So then the baby will um, learn that the um, feeling of hunger will go away if someone feeds it, okay. So again, this is coming back to relationships, right? The baby understands this very basic relationship. It screams. Then someone comes and then it gets fed and then it feels better, okay? And complex rewards, well, I, I guess um, these are a lot of rewards that might come from our neocortex. So, for example, uh, if someone says a sarcastic comment or something and we get a really good comeback, you know, we might get a big, I don't know, dopamine hit or something. <laughs> that might be more of a complex reward, I, I guess. So, yeah, coming back to machine learning, essentially what seems to happen is there are um, two bots involved, okay? Now there's um, a tester spawner. Um, so what this will do is it'll, um, you'll basically um, get a learning algorithm and you'll basically give it um, rewards and say, if this happens, then that's a reward. And um, let's say you give it a game like um, checkers or something. Um, you'll say, okay, you get a reward when you make a really good move, for example, which gets you closer to victory or something. So what the tester will do, it'll spawn 
um, millions of bots and bots will all play checkers okay um, really really quickly um, millions of times faster than what we could possibly play checkers and these bots will be tested by the tester and the bots that do better will be kept and the bots that do worse will be discarded okay um, and then the tester will carry on kind of making variations to the um, bots programming um, randomly and it'll kind of see what outcomes um, it actually produces sorry um, my lighting's kind of messed up <laughs> so yeah over time um, these bots will become more and more and more um, good at playing a particular game um, and in the end they can become better than any human has ever been so for example there's a Chinese game called Go and it's staggeringly complex and up until recently it was too complex for any machine to play it but recently there's a um, an AI which can actually play Go better than any human being possibly can but to even beat um, the existing AI champion and it, it actually became the best um, at playing Go um, just within a week or so of practicing um, so again if you get the programming there then you can do some really amazing things I've got my little light here um, so again how does that all relate to human general intelligence I think we use um, a similar system actually um, I've been looking into the brain and how it works and what you actually find out which is really interesting is we've got two simulations of reality running continuously in our minds okay the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere and in a way um, with machine learning there's a tester and then there's the bots but what the human brain does which is interesting is um, both sides of the brain are testers and bots um, so they kind of make hypotheses for each other and they kind of test each other constantly and they're always updating each other the right hemisphere of the brain seems to um, dominate the left even though this is kind of fairly new information so the left and the right hemispheres of the brain like I say both have different simulations and they're very very different so you've basically got two different people in your head essentially and the right will inhibit the actions of the left a lot of the time um, and what, we've, what science has actually discovered is 25% of our cortex actually has to do with inhibition so it inhibits the other half from doing certain things but nevertheless these um, two simulations are sort of bouncing ideas backwards and forwards like different hypotheses around the world and because they're both so very different I think this is kind of why um, you know human beings are so dynamic this is why we have this um, amazing innovative general intelligence it's because we've got two simulations running simultaneously which are updating each other constantly challenging each other we're not aware of this happening because we have a meta control center that operates below the level of consciousness so this uh, meta control center will basically well it'll just kind of keep everything running basically so you know we don't have too much conflict in you know very fairies of the brain here and um, we've kind of got a sort of smooth continuous um, consciousness as far as we're concerned like I said initially doesn't really matter how the brain works what kind of matters is that it um, produces the right kind of information so in our case right we need to know if there's a snake on the ground okay so there's a little area of the brain little tiny area and every minute we're awake it's saying is there a snake is there a snake is there a snake snake human beings have the equivalent of hardwired AI so for example Microsoft and Google have AIs that can recognize photos and movies and describe what's in the media such as a cat or a red bus this is like the, the hardwired part of the brain and these could be integrated into a general intelligence so you could have parts of the um, general intelligence which are not in any way actually intelligent but they will just look at the world and they'll gather information about the world and they'll say that thing's a bus um, that thing's a car um, watch out for that curb that looks quite steep and possibly that might be another area I don't know but um, I still think 95% of an AI um, could be hardwired 
and you just need for really sort of smart comparison bits um, to basically pull all the information in from the other areas of the brain uh, uh, not the brain but the um compute the machine intelligence so um for example if a computer had a facial recognition area it would just output for example all the um, emotions that it's detecting in the face and then the um, comparison modules could basically use that data to um try to understand the world a bit better um so what's missing is the also updating dual simulation parts so a young baby has a huge amount of sensory data that it can't understand. Its brain is equipped to recognize faces from birth. Like I say, this is hardwired. But the baby can't make sense of the rest of the data. Babies have the ability to make predictions and then test them um, at a very simplistic level. So if I cry, then someone will come. So again, that's um, sort of a hypothesis. Um, even if it can't make these kinds of hypotheses, it can still recognize patterns. So people seem to come when I cry. So again, if you um, notice that people seem to come when you cry, maybe you're going to cry and that might bring people to you. OK, um, so it's, it's kind of a natural sort of thing that you might um, assume. Again, even if 95% of a general intelligence was hard coded, then the comparison engines could quickly learn to use the data that these um, generated to try to understand the correlations. The two simulations could make hypothesis, which the other could test. And if that test is successful, then a correlation can be established. So in our case, um, the, the correlation with the baby is the baby cries, people come to see the baby. Um, it kind of you know, learns that um, crying can um, sort of correlate with people coming. Um, so this is all really easy to say, but very difficult to code. If multiple general intelligences like this were ever created and embodied, they could actually learn um, different correlations from each other. Um, and the rewards part, um, these could take data from hundreds of different bits of code. Um, okay, so um, I was sort of um, partly reading some of that. Um, the, the other thing that human beings have is emotions and um, sort of, like I say, sensory data. But I still think this could be simulated. Like I say, if um, instead of being feeling hot or cold, then well, a computer may not need to feel hot or cold, for example, it might be completely irrelevant to the computer, but nevertheless, it could still have um, data being fed in from hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different modules, which it could um, then use out in the um, rest of the world. So yeah, personally, this has all been a bit like airy fairy, but um, it, I just found it interesting, so I thought I'd make this video. Really hope you enjoyed it. Personally, I do think that we will make general intelligences that are able to do um, many, many, many different tasks. I um, think one of the really important things that human beings have is they start off with all the data okay, coming in, but the actual machine learning equivalent bit in humans, it starts off really, really, really basic, okay, and then it kind of gets more complex over time. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys and let me know what you thought of the video. And I genuinely would love to hear what you think in the comments, right? So please do leave a comment on what you think. Do you think we'll develop general intelligence soon? Do you think this sort of dual method of uh, having two different intelligences kind of bouncing ideas off each other constantly and testing each other with different hypotheses, do you think this is gonna be a good way of creating a general intelligence? Or do you think it won't work? Do you think it's too complex to code? Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching and goodbye.